Hello everyone. I hope all of you are doing well. In the process of creating neural networks, be it your convolutional neural networks or vanilla neural networks, we have good amount of queries in our minds. Queries such as which platform to select, should we go for TensorFlow or should we go for PyTorch? Which is the best possible structure of a CNN that we should select? What are the activations that we should select in different layers? and so on and so forth. For every query that we have, we'll have to write code and check the results. In today's video, I'll help you create a neural network without writing a single line of code. With that in mind, let's kickstart the video. But hey, hold on. It would be really motivating if you can press the subscribe button and also press the bell icon to be notified for amazing videos that I create on data science and machine learning. With that, let's kickstart the demo. What you're seeing right now is the amazing interface that four developers have created in MIT. The interface is so awesome that you don't have to write any piece of code in order to create neural networks. A big shout out to Jesse, Zach, Stephen and Rika for creating this. This entire project is open sourced on GitHub, so feel free to check this out. So let me show you the GitHub link as well. So this is the GitHub repository. I'll add the link to the exact website along with the GitHub repository in the description section of the video. Feel free to explore more. Now let's proceed forward and create our own neural network visually. So let me click on start building. So yeah, the interface looks very simple. It has very minimal blocks as well. So I'll go over each block one at a time. So starting off with the input block here, currently there is support for two data sets. You have the MNIST data set as well as the CIFAR 10 data set. I'm pretty sure if the adoption is really huge, then this would be integrated in a lot of platforms going forward. So you have the input block. The next block that we have is the convolutional block. So if you look at the right hand side, that is the parameters section. We have an option of tuning in the parameters as well. So I can tweak the total number of filters that are there in this convolutional layer. I can also tweak around the kernel size. I can also tweak around the stride and I can also apply L1 or L2 norm as well. So uh, this is a big advantage that I see here. Next up, I have the flatten layer. So let me select that. So currently whatever convolutions happen, you kind of want to flatten it into say one dimension. So that is where your flatten layer comes into picture. Before I jump onto the next layer, there is one thing that I kind of missed out on, which is your activation. So if you see the small block, this essentially signifies what kind of activation have we applied for that particular convolutional layer. So right now we have applied the ReLU activation. So that is what is displayed here. Uh, moving on to the next layer, we have the dense layer and the corresponding activations as well. And the final layer is our output layer. So this is the entire picture of the convolutional network that is there in front of us. Let me go forward and click on train. So now the entire training process starts. So the training has started as you can see the numbers are changing here and if I go to this tab here I will also be in a position to visualize batch wise how is my overall loss and how is my overall accuracy and here I have a confusion matrix as well. So the training is still going on. So we've already reached an accuracy of around 93%. Now we also have the validation numbers entered. Here is a heat map of the predicted value as well as the actual values. Where are we going wrong in terms of prediction? There is one more tab that I wanted to show you. So if I click here, I can also see the predictions. Where is it going wrong? So for class 2. For this particular example, it should be 2, but it is giving a prediction of 4. So 
you can visualize all the outputs really well it gives you like a comprehensive view of how your overall model is doing so you have training as well as validation numbers coming in as well we can tweak the batch size before starting the training process we can change the number of epochs we can also change the learning rate of the entire model building process so we've reached close to 75% of training with an accuracy score of close to around 90% if you notice carefully you also have optimizers here so you can try out different optimizers there are different losses that you can enter before training so yeah finally our training is complete we have our training accuracy equal to 100% and our validation accuracy equal to 88.4% we have a loss value of around 0.35 and our validation loss is around 0.4 so yeah this is the entire process wherein i didn't write a single line of code so i was having complete clarity in terms of how my model is performing with respect to both training data set as well as my validation data set if i look at predictions as well where i'm going wrong so these are some of the cases that the model is going wrong so ideally this should have been a 2 but it's predicting a 7 here as well it's predicting a 7 which is actually 2 so yeah you can see the amount of detail that you get while training models on this particular interface then i also talked about the different kind of optimizers that are available the different type of losses that you can try out while creating models so the one awesome thing about this entire activity is if i want to export the entire code into python i just have to press export to python and the code would be exported to our local machine let me go forward and show you the snippet that has been generated by this amazing interface so here you have it this is the entire code that is generated by the amazing interface that i showed you trust me when i say this i have not written even a single line of code be it the comment section be it the actual training process whatever happens even the pre processing of my training and testing data set all of this has been generated by one click so uh, i'm i'm really impressed by this interface that the mit team has created a big shout out again to them for creating something as awesome as this so the advantage that you get with such an interface is you can kind of try out different architectures whatever works for you you can export the code and then rerun or recreate the model at your end so to be very honest i think this is an amazing interface that the mit team has created uh, i see the overall adoption increase month on month and uh, this is truly an amazing product wherein you kind of get to experience how your model is performing while training this is truly amazing i mean i've not written a single line of code and yet i'm able to generate the final code in python there is also an option to generate this code in julia as well so a big 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 shout out to the creators and i feel more and more such things would propel the entire deep learning domain wow wasn't that amazing i didn't write a single line of code and i was able to create a classifier so this is the power of open source contribution a big shout out to the creators yet again so this is all that i had in terms of today's video content i hope you liked today's video If you do enjoy the videos that I create on my channel it would be super motivating if you can press the subscribe button and also press the bell icon to be notified for amazing videos on data science and machine learning thank you so much for watching this video